Okay, well, I think we're live. We are live. I can see us. So that's really cool. So let me just go and get it on Facebook set up and then we'll be ready to roll. So great stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited. I am too. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Like, let's just, um, my, um, come on. Always away, hey. It always takes a bit longer. Technology sometimes. That's it's, right. It's a fun so, thing. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Pause. Pause. <laughs> oh, golly. Hang on. Sorry, everyone. I have to just um, quickly, quickly get us back where we are. Just got to get us so I can see if anybody comments. Good there stuff. Are. There is yes. somebody on live. So hello, whoever is hello. watching us right now. Woohoo! It's good to see you. Um, so hi, I would I would love to share. Oh, I'll, I'll start again. I'm so excited that you are here. Like it's been just you know we've like we've known each other now for a while. Hey, and that's right. It's um, yeah, and I just love what you do. You're just so amazing. Oh, bless you, and, and ditto back, right? You know, <laughs> all the all the times, the chats we've had to date and how nice to be able to share one with everyone online. Yeah, so that's really, really good. So, yeah, so as I was saying, I've known you for ages and um, just for everyone out there, like Rosie lives, lives well, she, she time shares really between Australia and New Zealand and currently with COVID, she's in New Zealand. Um, she's married to Australian, which is why she time shares back and forward, you know, so, um, but... Yeah, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. So I love that you share um, what you do and why, how you, why you're doing what you do now and, and all of that. So, yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. And it was so interesting, isn't it? Um, and kia ora, everyone uh, from New Zealand. Nice to be online with, uh, with Angie. We've, we met each other in 2011 mm -hmm. at uh, the Passion Test Facilitators Training in Sydney. And, you know, awesome. And since then, we've been friends. And as it turned out, maybe it was your influence, Angie. I ended up meeting a man from Canberra. And Angie was in Canberra. And I ended up marrying that man. And in good Anzac tradition, keeping the, you know, trans-Tasman things aligned. And uh, the rest is history. And you've moved on from Canberra. We've moved on. And so we've got a residence in South Australia in Victor Harbour, which I love. Um, and still some family back in Canberra. So uh, I had the fortune to catch up with you, which was so neat last year because I had a gig to do in Surfers, and um, we got to catch up and have a, what was a Mai Tai or a margarita or something? Yeah, something like that. I wasn't sure what it was, but, yeah, that was fun. It I was fun. It was just beautiful. It was a lovely. And, I loved and what, the thing that I loved about us both, is we've both got a technical training background, so we've both delivered you know, training that's to corporates, organisations and staff where yours has been IT and mine's been building compliance, like rules, you know, laws. And so where the unusual beast is and what attracted me to you is I saw myself in you that we've got this left brain conventional side of us, but we're also big hearted light workers. You know, we're like in disguise in this environment where we bring Absolutely. our cool stuff, right, into the place, whether they know it or not, subliminally influence them. And then to come together with other light workers, another one, I mean, that Passion Test Weekend was just phenomenal. Oh, it was. It's great and, training. And phenomenal for me, because I've always, you know, right back when I learned that you were into Louise Hay as well, like, oh my goodness, like this is going 25, 30 years now backwards. Mm -hmm. And I've always had my own love of learning and professional development and personal growth. And life has taught me I had to have that, right? You know, it, like, I think I came here to be a learner and to share learnings as they evolved for me. That was my real purpose in life. And it's happened conventional stuff. And I've got a big heart for that uh, buildings because it's our baseline shelter needs. But I've got this huge heart for us as people, right? Growing as people and being who we're meant to be. But what you might not know is when I met you in the passion test is I was going through a most amazing personal trauma. And I'd had something that had turned my life upside down personally 
and I thought I was at the point that I just can't cope anymore, right? Yeah. And whilst a little seed inside me, a little seed, God seed, rosy seed, whatever you want to call it, planted in me, went, get up, it's time for you to rise up. And it's been a long tail journey to where I am now, but every one of those steps was important and the most significant were the things I chose to do. And you've just reminded me that that was almost, you know, June, so it's almost the whole cycle back again. On the week before I came to the passion test, my marriage blew up, my father had died four days ahead of that and I'd buried him and I'm an only child and my blended family was broke and was never to be repaired again. I was shifting house, shifting schools with my children and still had to turn up and be an entrepreneur in business and earn an income while all that was going on. Yeah, and the one thing I chose to do for myself was I remember sitting, I was in somebody else's house and I was sitting there and it was, a, you know, forest view, birds, calming. And I, Louise Hay came into mind, bang, Louise Hay. I thought I need to go and do something like that to just refresh myself, to find myself again, to reignite my passion again. And I looked online, I had my computer open and I typed in, you know, Louise Hay, passion, healing, or something of that, Google, and up come Passion Test Sydney. I went, I'm going. I didn't yes. think twice. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Right? I'd just gone through this trauma. I'd lost everything. Yeah. Money, house, everything. And I just went, I'm going. So I, I, I went, right, somehow the money will come. And within, within half an hour of that decision, my work email went ping. And the client came in with the exact money I needed for the airfare, the accommodation, and for the gig, the passion test facilitation, right? Isn't that amazing how the universe does that? Universe you know, delivered. It, it just does. When it's the right, when it's right, and it's your path, it just happens, doesn't it? And what's crazy, right, is I was under incredible stress. Like, I was not in flow. I was in the most... Like, I've never been like it since, thank God. But, and I never want to be like that, but it made me humble to realize two things. Many people go through that, and COVID has shown this to us, right? That there's this trauma. You have, everything's broken. You've got no income, no job, no place to live. You can't get back to the country you belong to, whatever's happening. You've lost people that you can't go and celebrate their life with. You can't, you have to do it remote. All of that ugly there's a seed inside every one of us that's calling for us at this time to step up to ourselves. You don't necessarily have to do it for the world's grace, but for yourself. You owe yourself this. You owe the person who you've lost this. And I owe to my father that my father was a strong figure in my life. And through all of that, I know part of him was telling me inside my heart, get up, rise up, and get on with it right? And that stopped me from any other pulling my head over the duvet, doona, and never coming out again type moment. Okay. Well, I felt like it and I wanted to. Oh, yes. And then the next, it's tiny little steps, right? Tiny little steps. Oh, yes. And the tiniest first step, because I couldn't do much and I was so traumatized, but I'd done the step, I'd committed to doing some personal development without knowing how it was going to happen, whether I could afford it, I was going. And those strong things that call up from within you, those strong things, that's the superpower calling, right? That's your somewhere under the dark and the muck and the stress and the fear and the trauma, something's going, calling you to rise up to it, your superpower. Ah, right? I remember just what you just said then. Um, I remember we had had um, we had a business in southeast Queensland, and just for whatever reasons, anyway, it we ended up losing the business, and we ended up um, having a significant financial loss because of it was management. We put a caretaker in, but anyway, that doesn't matter. And um, we had to. It was like we had to find like six figures. It was like it was just um, terrible. And I can remember because of that, we were not able to actually buy a house in Canberra at the time because 
we had to, you know, all of that. And I can remember lying there in bed one day and just saying to myself, you know, like, because it was, oh, well, with me, I can't buy a house here. I really want my own house, blah, 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 you know. And I lay in bed one day and I was just like, I'm not a victim. I'm not taking this crap anymore. And I lay there and it was like, I am not a victim. And I know that that's not the right, you know, if you're into affirmations, you know, there's a lot of negatives in there and that's not a really good affirmation. However, you know, you got to start somewhere. It was, right? You start with I started. Right? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's, that's you rising up and, to yourself. Yes. And, you know, from that point, the whole, the whole thing changed. You know, we had charts on the wall and I was, he was saving and he could see it. You know, we did what we could and it just, everything flipped. But it was that change, like what you said, that superpower, that thing inside that causes you to go, I'm not putting up with this anymore. You know? Oh, look, I, 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 and I love it. I just love it, Angie, because it's this, it's, this is the key right is it you know before you, abraham hicks says this right in the emotional ladder you can't get there from here yeah. right you want to be oh i should be more positive and people layer the shoulds on you and you listen to it and you go but you don't understand my pain and then you amplify your story and i did it right oh my god you've got no idea what happened to me what happened 2012 what uh 11 12 what happened to me was, wow, you know what? Everyone suffers loss. Yours isn't better than mine. Mine's not better than somebody else's. It is loss. And we, in whatever volume, amplification, feel it. Yes. And you can sync with it as a victim or get above the line and be a victor. And the way to do it, I get angry. Right, the way I, and people, oh my God, you, I have to get angry before I can get to a place of a neutral, before I can get to a place of hope, before I can get to a place of love, passion, and excitement, right? So on my journey to meeting you on the passion test, it was just a matter of a week. It was like a week I signed up and it was the next week. I went through that ladder like you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. And when I got there with you all, Right, the energy in the room and everything there, it was like, yes, right? So that was fantastic. The danger is, like everyone who's ever been to that, you're a born again something and you come away from a course like that and you go boom, right back into the muck. And I went lumpy, which is understandable, right? There were times where I'm going to be a passion test facilitator and that's my life now. Forget my business. Yeah. Cool stuff happened and then bad stuff happened cool stuff happen but that's life yeah it's at the bottom bits where i reckon you somehow you you got to capture yourself and that's where people bottom out it made me learn this i'd never faced the prospect that i didn't want to exist anymore and that that experience i had made me feel that so i was humbled to go oh my gosh if someone feels like that every day right but you don't need to. You don't need to. Because every single one of us has got something. It's just getting that seed to say, I'm choosing not to be a victim, right? But I am, and it's awful. And it's a, stop saying it to yourself. Stop yes. it. Yes. You know? Yes. And say, excuse my language, but truck it. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> exactly. Let you me know? show you something. I've got like a Louise Hay calendar. You'll love this. This is the one that's on my desk that I'm looking at all the time. Can you read it? It Stop says, this is, this is the moment I take my power back. This is the moment I take my power back. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Louise. Hey, God bless. Yeah. Oh, yes. And so where we are now and where that's morphed with a whole lot of interesting journeys, you know, that I manifested a husband. Hello. I manifest this ring before I had this ring. You know, I manifested a whole new family who, you know, new relationships, new cool stuff. And right now I've gone through interesting business lumpy bits, right? Yeah. But what it's led to is my wonderful business partner, Jen Tyson and I going, look, you're a cool lady with cool ideas. I'm a cool lady with cool ideas. We both want to write a book. We both want to go out in the world. We both want to do some online training. Let's do it together. Yeah. And let's call it, Unleash your superpowers. So her superpowers are around communications, difficult conversations, 
conflict in the workplace, all of the stuff that people find ugly and hard to say, and mine around the self-development and, and learning who you are at work and how you present yourself, because we spend so much friggin' time there, right? Oh, people, absolutely. Right? People think, I know, I'll leave corporate because it's stressful and start my own business. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Stress, you've got no idea, right? Because there's nothing between you and the pay packet. Whereas here there's, oh, you can complain and be a victim. A manager sucks, HR sucks, the corporate sucks, the government sucks. Here you face the mirror, I suck. I'm my boss. I'm the worst boss I've ever had. I'm not paying myself well. I, I don't give myself holidays. <laughs> so the unleashing that for me, learning as you have, having your own businesses, is you face the mirror every day. And it helps you go, well, actually, looking at other people feeling lost, victimized at work, well, you don't need to stay stuck there either. You can find your purpose, your passion, your values, your strengths and your talents. Find out who you are uniquely in that superpower and be that superhero. Be it. Yeah. So that's what my life's journey has brought me to with the trauma, the good, the bad, the interesting, the curious, the learning. And that's what, you know, I'm just fired up because I'm doing this in my left brain life as well subliminally all these years and I didn't have a name for it now I do have a name for it which is here you know it's about relationships communication knowing who you are standing in your truth and following a career path where it's aligned with your values you know you get to a certain age and go I'm not I've loved this I've had 20 30 something years here but I just don't fit anymore because the yeah. values have changed mine haven't or with COVID, people are like, oh, but I can't get a job and I can't do this. Well, again, it's 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 ripe for victimization. You know, poor me, there's all these jobs, I've applied for 50 and I've got no interviews. It's traumatizing. Oh, it is. Absolutely. I'm not denying that it's traumatizing. I've lost my business overnight. And people go, pivot, pivot. Pivot like a friggin' ballerina to your head spins. <laughs> You know, it's, it's like, you've got to go one step, which is I'm not going to be a victim to the COVID thing, being unemployed or no business, no clients. This is the day I take my power back. I'm going to tap into my superpower. I might not even know what that is yet, but I'm calling on it. Wherever you are, come out for me rise up for me and let's in our work life because we are in an economic context and we are a human being in that workplace let me align myself so i can be awesomely in my superhero mode yeah yeah wonder woman bracelets on superman cape at the back whatever way you manifest it and be out there with it right yeah so, I mean, it's really important for entrepreneurs too, you know, like so many small business owners right now, it's, it's tough, isn't it? You know, it is, yeah. it is tough for, for well, so many. That's right. And what's interesting is 2012, having gone through various things, I thought my trauma was over. I was cleansed out to hell in my business life in 2012. Mm -hmm. I had this long-term contract relationship with a, a group of people who I loved, who I considered as farm now, as we call it here, or family. And, you know, and they divorced me. A new CEO came on board and said, that's it. All the previous trainers, I was the national training manager on a contract. And he just cut me without any interview with nothing, just cut it. And it was gone. And he then deliberately sought out to do a, a, a discrediting of me because I was the competition now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was trauma. I felt like I'd gone through another divorce. It was unbelievable. And I used to go, oh, God, now I'm a victim over here again yeah. and double whammy. But it was like a real questioning of, well, who am I anymore? What do I offer? Do I still do this? It took earthquakes, earthquakes in this country to shake me up, to remind me of who I am 
and to pull me back from being a victim. Yeah. So through the earthquakes, long story short, I had clients who up to that point couldn't or wouldn't buy from me anymore because of that contextual relationship clash. They wanted the CEO and I to come on the page. He wouldn't come with me. He wasn't coming across the bridge. Jen Tyson and my business, she, we, we talked together about the bridge. It's Jen's construct. And he wouldn't meet me on the bridge. He wouldn't, didn't want to negotiate, didn't want to fix the relationship. He wanted it broken and he wanted to take me down on my side of the bridge as well. So I had no choice. But clients after this earthquake, Rosie, we understand you might have some capability. Are you free for a month to come here and do this? Yep. Yep. So after the disaster, the trauma, the loss of life in Christchurch, the things, 14,000 shakes, that was the call I got, right? So if anything of our chat together, it's to give people hope that COVID looks friggin' ugly and terrible, right? But it's it may just be the thing that shakes you up into who you really are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, Jen's online at the moment because she just said, hey, the bridge, yay, the bridge. So, hi, hello, Jen. Um, the bridge. You? <laughs> so, yeah, so she's, she's here. And um, Joanne was in, on as well saying, you know, absolutely, when we were talking about taking baby steps. So, so that's yeah. really cool. So, yeah. It's, it's that thing, isn't it, is, you know, it resonates for me, all the tools, techniques, both learning that I've applied to myself, having to relearn, unlearn, take on new learning, to then apply all the different personal development tools we've got, all the business training we've both had, and blending that all into the mix. And it, no matter whether you're employed self-employed, a business with employees, you still got to remember who you are, find out who you are, keep your North Star, and if it's so cluttered right now, you don't know what that is, right, that's your first job, right, you've got other stuff to do, but if you've got a window of five minutes, 10, 15, listen to that podcast, listen to this kind of thing, join one of the groups, join our group, you know, and just participate with other people who get it, you know, we've all our slight workers have been undercover too much all these years. You're either seen as woo-woo, hippie, or you're conventional corporate. You know what? Some of us are corporate woo-woo in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we've been there all along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we've been putting our little sprinkling of dust everywhere. It's not one or the other. COVID has taught us, you know, time for integration and for the truth across racism sexism anyism it's we are human beings together who are all trying to be our best yeah. we might not remember that that's what the purpose was to keep experiencing things which draw our best out of us at times i've been the worst of myself absolutely hands up i'm sure all of us in the victim mode you're the worst of who you can be and you know that ugly of yourself and if you've got people who love you, nevertheless, then hold on to those beautiful people because no doubt you hold on to them when they're ugly, you know? And then help us remind ourselves. It's all it is, is, you know, women say this to me. Oh, you know, I just want to tell my husband he just wants to try and fix me. Just want him to listen. I'm like, well, you know what? All you say is... When I behave like that, and I'm saying that, and I'm boo-hoo this and that, don't give me solutions. All I need you to say is this one sentence. I'm, I'll give you a hug, and I'm just here to remind you about who you are. That works with my Aussie husband. The same. <laughs> and I think, think, too, you know, that going into business for yourself, like, it is one of the biggest, for me, and learning self personal growth learning experiences that you can have because golly you learn so much about yourself when you are oh you're naked right just for yourself yeah and, like there is no one else to call on there's no one else to there's like there is no one else it's you know like you said it, it's it's <laughs> it's like that's right and like you know like you and i've talked over the years and beautiful jen you know being with me in different roles and different places in business at the end of the day when you put down the phone or stop the zoom call it is only you 
you know, at the end of it, it is stripped bare naked in front of yourself, going, I don't like, you know, I'm true, I don't like the look of who I'm becoming in this stress. I don't like the look of that. That's not who I truly am. And people are now starting to identify that, that oh, she's angry, she's whatever, whatever. Well, you know, it's not who I truly am. I'm funny, I'm quirky, I'm silly, I'm all these other things. But if I keep giving that amplification and not reminding myself to come back from that or above the line, I've gone below, below, up, you know, we all go below. So reminding myself to come up and I need friends or I need a reminder or an affirmation card or something that goes, hey, right? I'll give you mine. Just I'll reach across. This was given to me by my son. Beautiful. So that I keep this in my office. And I love your, you know, believe, create, right? Dream. If, if in doubt, it's right in front of me. Right, and the other one, which it might not be able to see, which my um, a business colleague gave to me, so it's in writing, is the business is to provide for me, not me provide for the business. Yes. Now that's a flipped way of thinking, isn't it? That yeah. people often go, you've got to hear me here to serve, but you can give and give and give free things, free this, give to your customers, give to your spent, give to your staff, to your spent. Give to your organization to your spent, and then you go, Well, what's left of me now? Right? And just flipping that whole thing on its head and go, Even though I'm giving, the business is actually to provide for me because it is a business, it's not a charity, it's not a hobby, it is a business. Yes. So that just is the pattern interrupt when I'm in the <laughs> mode, yeah, yeah. pattern interrupt, going, Hold on, these people know how I am, they have to live with me. They know what it's like. They've been through the 20 years of business with me. Yuck. Sometimes I'm yucky, you know? And, and this boy, right, 15 years of age, finds me funny things on YouTube to watch. Mum, I made your cup of tea and brings it in, right? Those two simple little things make my day. Yes. I'll share with you. I've got my, I've got, I'm in my office and it's actually like a, a room. It's got... I've got a mirrored cupboard doors here and my daughter has written on it with the, you know, those chalk things and she's gone, smile, have a wonderful day, enjoy every second, catch every moment, remember to have fun. Yes. <laughs> so that's awesome. What, that's what I've got on my... Um, awesome. Yeah, up there on my mirror. So yeah. I love it. It's, it's yeah. one of those things that Marissa Peer talks about a lot because we spend so much time, particularly as women, in the mirror criticising ourselves. Mm. So like men shave, brush our teeth or whatever and, and just carry on. But as women, we go, oh, God, there's another wrinkle or, you know, mascara's not on straight or whatever we say. The shit we say to ourselves in the mirror, I would never say to you, Angie. You know, you'd be going, like, wow. Yeah, another wrinkle. <laughs> You're like, it's over. I've got more than you. So I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's this crazy. So Marissa Peer. She talks about putting this one simple chalk or lipstick or whatever on your mirror because in your bathroom, so you do it every day. And like I've done affirmations of different sorts. I've done posters and things in my visors and apps in my phone. But rather than complex, just take, you know, I could take my lipstick, and I have, right? Because I am enough. Oh, that's a big one. Right, is a massive one. We so many people. I know with my work with Louise Hay, um, the Louise Hay work. So many of us, we're not enough. We're not enough. And and the question is, if if people actually are listening to this, I ask you, who were you not enough for? Like, oh, that's a perfect question. I love it. You know, like, is it? Are you not enough for you? Are you? Do you feel not enough for your family or your work? Or like, who? What is it that you're not enough for? Oh, look, that's brilliant because that superwoman complex, so that's why, you know, we've kind of gone with the unleash your superpower superhero. But the superwoman complex is I'm not enough anywhere. I'm not a good enough mother because I don't go to the practices because I have to be at the staff meeting. I'm not good enough here because I can't cook a friggin' master chef dinner. I'm, you know, reheating some leftovers. And you start cranking on your of, yeah. right yeah. all across the place like that by and i mean we all do it 
or and then the worst is you go and take your whatever off and you're brushing your teeth at night and you're ready to put a water and even on your face and you look yourself in the mirror and the last thing you're saying to yourself is oh no there's another something you know or oh, i'm looking bad. old or saggy or yeah. so you're just shitting yourself right there. And, then, and you go to bed with and those then, negative thoughts you know yeah. lisa ann has just popped on to say that she's just joining and to say hi to you hello how are so, you yeah. So we probably should be thinking about wrapping up. So two, like two things. One is, do you have any advice? Like how can, like for people? And secondly, yes. how can they get in touch with you to, to learn more about what you do and um, yeah, connect with you? I think, thank you so much. It's so good to chat to you. And I think between us, you know, that, that just decide to no longer play a victim anymore, wherever you are playing that game in your life. Just, just make the decision today, right now, that's it, done. That's the first step, just take that one step. And if you catch yourself go, going back down into it, stop it and say it again, stop it, say it again, stop it until you go, I'm no longer that, and now what? Right, and then the now what is any of the resources that you've got and we've got, and so if you want to connect to us, on Facebook, you'll find us in Switched On Learning. And if you want to have a look at our website and our free courses around some of the stuff, switchedonlearning.net. Beautiful. And we'll put, we'll put that in the comments below so that way people can actually Fantastic. Connect, connect through with you straight away. So, and I love that. I love what you just said. It's very true. You know, it's that mind shit, mind Mind shit. Oh, no, that's right. That's it. I'm writing that down. That's mind shit instead of mind shit. <laughs> I didn't say Isn't it? Come on. I thought it. I heard it. I I do. it. Anyway, but it's that mindset shift. That's a bit, you know, horrible. anyway. But isn't it? But like, like you said, keep saying it and the mind will, it will change. And when it changes and you have that shift, you, you can blossom. You can shine. You've got that superpower yeah. and you can... Put your cape on and yeah, hold on to your lightsaber. Yeah. Oh, woo, we're on it. in the world. <laughs> Love it. Oh, it looks so wonderful. Thank you so much for the chat, my lovely. And I Thank hope you. as soon yeah, as we can fly that we will get to see each other again soon. It's been lovely chatting with you. Thank you so, so much for coming along. Awesome, and, Angie. I look, talk, look forward to talking to you again really soon. So take care. Thank you. Yes, see Bye. you.